Hey guys, I just got home and I brought some things with me. Phlebotomy, let's talk about it. So first of all, back to basics. What is phlebotomy? The phleb is the vein and the tomy is the surgical cutting. Phlebotomy. Why? Why would you do phlebotomy? So many things can be figured out about you just from your blood. Chemistry values like magnesium, potassium, calcium, and then your blood count levels like red blood cells, white blood cells, platelet counts. And then you have your enzymes. A super important one is troponin. You can tell if someone has had a heart attack just by testing for troponin, which you just need a little bit of blood for. It's amazing. So let's go over the hands-on part, which is my favorite part. So the supplies that you'll need are all in this bag. So first of all, let's talk about the bag itself. This is a lab bag, okay? This is a bag that you would use to seal specimens in and send it to the lab. So let us take the contents out of said bag, shall we? Okie dokie. Okay, let me organize these things and then I will explain them. They're so fun. So this is typically what you'll need to do a phlebotomy draw. I'm missing a couple of things, but you'll still be able to get the essence of it through what I have right here. So let's talk about names. This is a butterfly, this is a vacutainer, alcohol swabs, gauze, tourniquet, band-aids, and tubes. So these two up here are actually the tools that you'll use to inject the needle into the vein and then draw the blood out. So these are sharps. Whichever one you use depends on you. It is your preference. This is my go-to. I love this one. This one is just for hard situations. Alcohol is obviously used to prep the area before you puncture the skin. Please let this dry before you poke your patient because otherwise it will sting. Tourniquet. Do you guys know what a tourniquet is? Let's talk about it. So I'm going to go ahead and try to take this off with just one hand, but basically tourniquet looks like this and how you use it is as follows. So we're going to be doing it on my leg so that you guys can know. Pretend that this is an arm, okay? What the tourniquet does is it stops the blood flow in the vein. When you stop the blood flow in the vein, it helps you as the phlebotomist to allow that vein to engorge with blood so you can actually find it and be able to poke it. So I want to show you guys how to tie a tourniquet. I'm going to have to do it on my leg, but pretend that it's an arm, okay? So pretend that this is the shoulder, this is the upper arm, this is going to be the elbow, and this is going to be the forearm. And the best place for you to get a good vein is going to be right above um, it's going to be in, in the elbow crease, okay? It's called the median cubital area. But you're going to want to put your tourniquet a couple of inches above that so you don't block the vein that you're trying to get. So let's see that in action. So what you're going to want to do is take the tourniquet around the arm. Okay? Stretch it out like that. Put top over to the bottom. And then tuck it under like that, okay? That's it, it's so simple. The key is that tying it this way allows you to quickly release it. See that, that's the key. So once you reach that stage in your phlebotomy draw, you'll be able to push down on the vein and feel it push back up on you. It's amazing, it's gonna be spongy. So then it's time to actually pull out your tools. So I'll show you guys how I set up when I have to do a draw on a patient. So this is exactly what it looks like. I grab a napkin from their room, I put it on their lap, I put all my stuff on top of it, I put my uh, tubes in the order of draw. You guys remember the mnemonic for it? Bring your good veins, uh, blue, yellow, green, violet. And this is the next step of my setup. I put the tourniquet on and then I put the band-aid and the gauze kind of on their shoulder, that way I can easily reach it and do what I need to do. And because I'm right-handed, I put the rest of my supplies on my left side. I took the vacutainer out of its packaging and I put my first tube already in it. I have my alcohol swab right here. I'm not going to really put on my pants, but you would go ahead and clean the area, prep it with the alcohol swab, and then get rid of it. Okay, I took the cap off of my vacutainer. Now the needle is exposed. Bevel up. I'm going to insert it using just the strength of my fingers at about a 45 degree angle and then literally the movement of the wrist is all you need and you insert it into the vein. 
Once it's in the vein, you're going to use your other hand. Right now I'm going to use the same hand because I'm recording. But you would use your other hand to push the tube into, into the vacutainer because there's a needle at, the, at this inside of the vacutainer. So you push it in. There you go. At this point, your hand is going to look just like this. The tip of the needle in the patient's arm and then your tube fully into the vacutainer and blood is going to be streaming through. Now being as gentle as possible, you're going to use your other hand to remove the current tube that you have. And immediately you're going to be not shaking the blood, but just rotating the tube like this to mix the additive. Okay, so this is better. Now I can record with um, using both my hands. So again, you're going to have the vacutainer in the patient's arm as gentle as you can. You remember the order of draw, bring your good veins, please, girls and guys. So blue first, take it out, rotate it three to four times to mix that additive. Next color, bring your, so yellow, same thing, take it out, rotate, bring your good, so next up is green, bring your good veins, violet. Okay, and then take out the tourniquet first, roll up your gauze next, put it over the puncture, take the needle out, lock it, put the band-aid on. And you're done. Sorry if I sounded rushed in the last couple of snaps, but the problem is that I had to record it from my phone and then post it from memories. And the problem is, Snapchat won't let me post it if it's more than a minute, so I was like rushing through it and it sounded a little weird because my phone was like under my chin and anyways. <laughs> so earlier when I was talking about not having everything that I needed, I was referring to the butterfly. There's one more piece that you would need to connect to the butterfly to be able to use it. So at this point, now that you're done, you would take your vacutainer and toss it into the sharps container. You would take your tubes, label them at the bedside, scan them in the computer. And then you would just put them into your specimen bag. Make sure that you seal it very well. And then depending on where you work, you could walk this to the tube station and tube it down to the lab or you would walk it to the lab, either one. Then the rest of this stuff, you would have your gloves on at this point. What would happen is you would grab everything with your gloved hand and then you would take the glove off. You would take your glove off by slipping it down your wrist over your entire fist so that all of these things become enclosed in the glove. Then you throw the glove away, you tell the patient have a nice day, and then you pat yourself on the back because you're an amazing nurse or phlebotomist or doctor. So I hope you guys found that informative and hopefully not boring. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's phlebotomy for you. Amazing stuff. I got something over here that I need to figure out. I just found it on my door when I came home from work and I'm like, what? Let me show you guys, it's kind of weird. So this is what I'm trying to figure out. It says we will be conducting a fire sprinkler and smoke detector testing. The fire sprinkler part though, really? Like, are they really talking about that? Are they really gonna let that spray all over my apartment? Like, like no, can I, I don't know what to do. I think I'm just gonna cover everything with plastic bags just to be safe. Because, I don't know, like, I don't want my stuff getting all soaked. Like, who wants that? Anyways, good night, guys. Thank you for tuning in. I hope I didn't bore you. If I did, here's a big hug. Forgive me. I love you. Bye. Mwah.